Greetings, and welcome to episode 43. In today's episode, we'll be discussing entitlement and how that relates to my previous two videos and how it relates to pretty much all of us, including myself. In some part, whether it be large or small, we all have a sense of entitlement of some sort. Uh, I'd also like to point out the fact that I, uh, my previous video got a, uh, a view from someone that I don't know who he is, or even if it's a he, a he or she. And uh, they're either trolling or extremely misinformed. I was accused of being a Satanist because of my necklace. And uh, without being given the benefit of being asked what my beliefs are. And that kind of upset me. And the more I think about it, I think the person is just trolling. So I might just delete that whole thread and block him or her. Or maybe not, because it could evolve into a meaningful discussion. Hopefully, it'll evolve into a meaningful discussion. Otherwise, it'll just get deleted and the person will get blocked. <coughs> Excuse me, because obviously the person didn't read my, or didn't watch my very, very first video, which stated that trolls will just be blocked and banned Im immediately. Because not only is the discussion off topic, but you can't just go on somebody's uh, channel and accuse them of something without asking questions first. He didn't give me the benefit of the doubt to even concern himself with what I had to say and just immediately started spitting negativity at me. So, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and see if this evolves into a meaningful discussion. Otherwise, I got to do what I got to do. Anyway, if we're ready, let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, entitlement. What is entitlement? It is the sense, whether real or imagined, that you are entitled to a certain object, uh, certain services, certain way of being treated. Uh, it could be just about anything. Like some teens believe they're entitled to a new car when they turn 16. Some people think they're entitled to the next level of electronics that comes out. Like, I should just get it. Usually it's the younger people with that sense of entitlement, but adults have a sense of entitlement also. But uh, let me explain to you my personal sense of entitlement. I believe I'm entitled to be treated with dignity and respect and demand nothing less than to be treated with dignity and respect. That is my sense of entitlement. Beyond that, everything's up in the air. It's, uh, everything's based on either money or a two-party decision, but it is my sense of entitlement that says I'm entitled to be treated with dignity and respect and not be talked down to or slandered or, or, or belittled for whatever reason, whether it's my job the way I dress, color of my skin, what have you. It, it just doesn't matter. I believe myself to be entitled to my dignity and self-respect. And I believe that I'm entitled to not have you or anybody else try and take those things from me. Uh, but that's, that's as far as it goes. I don't believe I'm entitled to free money. I don't believe I'm entitled to anything really nothing material for sure I don't believe I'm entitled to eat just because I'm alive I mean if I, I have to pay for it in one way or another either I have to go hunt for it which is uh, time and energy cost 
to go get that food because I'm hunting for it or I'm growing it myself or I have to get a job and earn money and go pay for it. I do not believe I'm entitled to a roof. Either I'm going to go put up a tent in the middle of nowhere where, where, where no one lays claim to the land or I'm going to go build a house on property I am either borrowing or bought, or bought or I'm going to stay with friends, or I'm going to get a job, earn some money, and pay for our, pay for a roof over my head. I do not believe I'm entitled to that. I do not believe I'm entitled to special treatment. If, if demanding to be treated with dignity and respect is special treatment, then yes. I believe I'm entitled to special treatment, but I don't think it's special treatment. If I treat you with dignity and respect, I don't believe I'm giving you special treatment. That's not special treatment. To me, that's common sense. All people should be treated with dignity and respect, regardless of race, religion, uh, any beliefs, be it political, spiritual, what have you. I believe that all people should be treated with dignity and respect. Uh, but from a particular point of view, that I guess that could be seen as wanting special treatment, believing you're entitled to be treated better, but that's not better. I believe I'm entitled to be treated equal to whomever. Not just better than, but equal to. And I do my part and treat people the way I want to be treated. That is to say, with dignity and respect. I cannot speak to any other type of entitlement. I can only point out the things that I see, like on the internet. Uh, and it's mostly young people. I don't see a whole lot of adults that act this way. But there are. There are adults that I have met and that some that are in my life that demand not just dignity and respect, but that you treat them better than you treat either yourself or anybody else. And they don't even have to be a relative or a significant other. They just demand to be treated in a certain way that places them above you or at the very least above everybody else you know. And when they don't get that, that special treatment, they get upset. Like uh, pointing out their uh, when they when they do something that 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 shows them to not be perfect, they believe that that tears them down below you, as opposed to tearing not tearing them down at all, just just saying, hey, you screwed up. That doesn't. That shouldn't tear you down below me. That should just be like, hmm, yeah. Let me think about that for a minute. Yeah, let me see if I can fix that. See, I guess I just see things differently. Nobody's entitled to get away with stuff they do. Uh, but going back to the beginning of this point, the the sense of entitlement that I've seen most often comes from young people. And I have children, and my children have a huge, overdeveloped sense of entitlement. They believe they're entitled to have their electronics, and then they're entitled to their game consoles, and they're entitled to, if they have these 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 electronics, they then they're entitled to the internet, and and they're entitled to mom and dad's money, and they're entitled. To, why? And it's like, wow, really? And what's funny is I didn't even see it in them first because my kids haven't always had my uh, first off, let me state my kids are the ones that live at home still are 11 and 12. And it hasn't always been this way because they haven't always had electronics because I didn't want them to have electronics at a very, very young age. The most electronics they had was a gaming console. Hand, first handheld, then they got uh, an actual gaming console. But since then, they've gotten 
uh, like actual electronics and uh, you can see the sense of entitlement like they're entitled to be able to put it you know use it on the internet and they're entitled to be well if I'm able to download things with this I should be able to download things with this yeah but who's gonna pay for it well you are <laughs> and then being a gamer, you go online and just wow, the entitled the sense of entitlement to some of these people that play on some of these games, they believe they're entitled to special treatment because they're so good at the game you should, you should bow down, and God forbid if you beat them because then wow, that shatters their sense of entitlement, and then they get even more pissed off and they like instead of deflating their sense of entitlement, it inflates it more. And they become almost enraged because you can beat them at their game or what have you. But just hearing in, in the comments, or not even in the comments, but in the chat, that the way they view the world is like, wow, I didn't even have these things when I was your age. You're not entitled to these things. These things are, you have to pay for these things. You know, If you can't afford them, you just don't get them. There's no no magic free electronics, free Wi-Fi shop. I mean, yeah, there's free Wi-Fi, but you're not going to get it as good as you can get it if you just get internet piped into your house. <laughs> and it's just like, wow, really? This is this is it. This is how uh, this is how far we've come. Entitled to break the law, I should be able to speed because my car can go that fast, or I should be able to cut you off because I'm in a hurry or I can treat you any way I like but you better treat me with respect those kinds of senses of that kind of sense of entitlement is 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 well let's face it entitlement itself is as it's selfishness unless of course in my opinion wanting to be treated with dignity and respect that's not selfish that's like what would you call that that's I don't know fundamental to me if you're not willing to treat someone with dignity and respect then you're the one with the sense of entitlement if I'm willing to go out of my way to treat you the way I would like to be treated with a smile on my face and hey how you doing or without a smile on my face and hey how you doing you know I will give that courtesy that that respect to you and yes I expect it in return just like I assume you expect it from me if you're giving it to me so I guess it can be said that entitlement is an inflated sense of expectation you expect certain things. These things are given to you or to whoever it is with the sense of entitlement. But like I said, we all have a sense of entitlement of some sort to some degree. Even if it's a little bitty, it could be huge. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I don't subscribe to the entitlement of others if you're coming at me with a sense of entitlement I'm going I'm going to shut you down right there because you've already not come at me with respect so you're not going to get that from me just because I don't want to help feed that sense of entitlement in you so I'm going to step back and yeah well we may we ugh. <laughs> trouble talking we may still interact but it's not going to be at the level you want and I'm going to go out of my way to make sure you know that it's not at the level you want so that you know that you cannot come up with your inflated expectations to everyone because that might work on some people where you demand respect but you have no intention of giving it. See, I run into that. I used to run into that a lot on the road. And, uh, and this is where adults, this is adult, the adult version of entitlement. The adult version of entitlement 
has nothing to do with with material possessions. It's about I, 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 I. I deserve this and I deserve that. I deserve to be treated better than you because I've been doing this longer. I deserve to be treated better than anybody because I drive a truck for a living. I just I deserve to be treated because I'm in pain because I'm away from my family and these people don't take into consideration that we're all truck drivers. We're all in pain because we're away from our family. We're all driving trucks. Uh, you know, we're all doing this and I've never put much stock into how long a person's been doing it because that's you know, the unspoken rule in truck driving is you no longer go by life experience. You go by how long you've been truck driving. Well, the crafty drivers lie about how long they've been driving to garner a little bit more respect. I don't respect you because you're a truck driver. I respect you because you're a human being on earth. So I have never gone by driving experience. I go by your life experience. Driving truck is what you do. What do you do? Who are you when you're not driving that truck? Because most drivers develop a false persona so you're not really getting the real them. And I cannot give respect to someone that is putting forth their ego, and it's usually a hyperinflated ego, with a hyperinflated sense of entitlement. And when they, when drivers see that they're not going to get that treatment that they've grown accustomed to from me, it's either met with negativity, or they just stop talking to me. But there are those occasions, and I'm going to say that it's it happens more often than I'm giving it credit for, where the person will come up with their inflated sense of entitlement. I'll poke holes in it, <laughs> because I don't want to completely remove their sense of entitlement. Just deflate it a little bit, you know? We're all suffering out here. We're all driving every day. We're all doing this. You're not going to get any more special treatment than I'm getting from you and I let them know that and like I said it happens more often than I gave it credit for but the drivers will meet you pretty much at the bottom at the average where they realize okay uh, we're all suffering and I pretty much ooh, excuse me just learned how to treat people that way from other drivers well you came to the wrong driver to get that validation of your suffering because we're all suffering and I'll give you I'll give you credit for your suffering but not this this the the level of respect that you're demanding from it because the one thing I've learned in my 40 years on this planet <laughs> I keep saying the one thing there's a lot of the one things <laughs> one of the things I've learned on in my 40 years on this planet is anyone who deserves your respect will try to earn it and the people that try to force you to respect them neither have earned it or deserve it point it's a fact the most deserving of respect, the people I've met in my life that deserved the most respect went out of their way to earn your respect. And the people I found that deserved the least amount of respect tried to force you to give them the level of respect that they think that they have earned. Basic common decency is all I'm asking for. I have my self-respect and dignity to look after also and I will look after them so if you can't meet me at common dignity and common respect then you're not getting either from me and it's not unheard of for me to break off communication with someone because of their overinflated sense of entitlement which is to say an overinflated sense of expectation. I expect from you. Oh, really? You expect from me? Hmm. Well, either I'm going to take the time to burst your ego or I'm going to take the time to 
get away from you <laughs> because you're not going to get that from me you have to earn respect and I even go so far as to give the benefit of the doubt you have my respect until you ruin it and usually when you come up with that uh, sense that inflated sense of entitlement you've just you've, you've just blown it and now I don't respect you because you try to force me to respect you instead of just assuming common human decency and showing me the same level of respect that you require for yourself all of us suffering regardless of even if you are a truck driver all of us suffering in some form or another on this planet and you don't get to diminish someone else's suffering just because you're suffering and that's that is the norm and uh, for for children suffering equates to not having what the other kids have and I see that like when like I said playing the video games and, and even seeing my children but other people get have these yeah other people's parents go out and pay for these things but other people but other kids get to play violent video games yeah those aren't my kids I can't tell them they can't play violent video games but if the content of a video game if made into a movie would be rated R yeah you're not playing that <laughs> What kind of bad parenting is that? <laughs> if I wouldn't let you watch an R-rated movie, why am I going to let you play a video game that if it were made into a real live-action movie would be rated R? Not, it's not going to happen. Not going to not going to do that. Now, granted, it is still just a video game and in cartoon format, but it is still violent. It still has explicit uh, uh, visuals. Or, or language, you know, if they're swearing a lot, no, you're not playing that. Like Grand Theft Auto, they want to know, well, how come I can't play Grand Theft Auto? Jonah can play Grand Theft Auto. Jonah is my son. Jonah plays Grand, can play Grand Theft Auto because Jonah is 18 years old. And if I tell him, no, you can't play Grand Theft Auto, he'll just go to his house and play Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <coughs> Not to mention Jonah is very, not only is Jonah very mature for his age, but like I said, he's 18 years old. You are 12. <laughs> You've got six years to go before you can use that argument. And it's not like I'm trying to hide them from the world, because I figured, what, she's 12? I figured 15 or 16, then maybe she can get into playing violent video games. But not at a level where she is now, where... So she's not developing uh, a, a violent streak. The only thing I have to rely on is is the the white hat. And to elaborate on that point is there is a sense of good guys and bad guys in most violent video games. So you're relying on that white hat to 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 so she understands that only if you're the good guy can you be violent, or is it okay to be violent? <laughs> and see even that sends the wrong message but see I play my favorite game the game I play most often is Grand Theft Auto and well why can't we play that well because you're not the good guy in Grand Theft Auto you are in fact a criminal in Grand Theft Auto and there may be worse criminals than you in the game but it does not diminish the fact that you in fact are a criminal and I don't want to instill in you that it's okay to be a criminal as long as you're not the worst criminal <laughs> just like I really don't want to instill in them that it's okay to be violent as long as you're the good guy I'm not against violence and I'm not and by any means a pacifist I just don't want them to get get it twisted in their head that we can just run amok and be violent whenever we feel like it if we're in the right because even as an adult a non-pacifist adult even I know that violence doesn't solve every situation I'm not gonna say it doesn't solve situations I'm gonna say it doesn't solve every situation so and it just makes it so I don't have to constantly sit and explain these points and uh, yeah people say in my day and age <laughs> yeah well in my day and age they didn't have 
violent video games. I think the most violent video game they had when I was her age was Super Mario Brothers. You jumped on a turtle. Or a walking mushroom. There was a sense of not reality that this couldn't possibly happen in real life, so that kind of cartoon violence it doesn't bother me. And they have, on their game console, they have games like that. They just, they think they're boring. And my daughter came home one evening talking about, oh, I was at so-and-so's house and we played Gears of War and blah, blah, blah. It was like this and that and this and that. And I'm thinking, and I told her, you're not, you're not supposed to be playing those kind of games. And I told her, I said, the rules are where you're at, not just when you're in my house, but they follow you wherever you go. The rules follow you. And you're not supposed to be playing those games. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could explain it. and Other parents might not see the harm, but I do. I don't. I see the harm because these things weren't there when I was a kid. And these games, that you, most parents would say, oh, it's just a game. But they don't see the content. I mean, sometimes it's super graphic. Broken bones, blood. Uh, explosions, watching people burn up or be exploded. Yeah, you, that's kind of graphic. And if you wouldn't want, let them watch it on TV or take them to a movie like that, why would you buy them a video game like that? And then the first thing you're going to do is if you do that and the kid becomes violent acting out scenes from the game or a movie, the first thing you're going to do is call these people that make the game or make the movie and you're going to rally against them and you're going to draw a bunch of people to rally against these people. And it was your own fault for letting your kid into that. It's not the, their fault for making this content. It's your fault for letting the kid enjoy that content. So, I'm going to, I go out on a limb because about the time I was 15 years old, that's when I, when did I get I got my first game console when I was 17 16 17 I think I was 17 and most of my games were strategy games puzzle games I didn't have a lot of violent video games there were violent video games out there like I'm sure you remember Contra things like that that, that you know the the side shooter <laughs> Where it's uh, you just run along and shoot, 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 and keep going, and then you had your your spaceship versions of the same damn game. Only instead of a guy, you pick up certain tokens, and your gun will do certain things. Well, instead of being a guy running with a gun, you're a guy flying in a ship, and your weapons do the exact same thing, and they name the game something different. But you're doing essentially the same thing. <laughs> a linear shooter I guess it, I guess you would you would call it where you're it's just you're running across the screen and as you move the screen just goes sideways kind of like Super Mario Brothers only it's it's a shooter and that was as violent as it got when I was their age but kids nowadays have that sense of entitlement I should get to do it because all the other kids are doing it <coughs> and I don't tell them, well, if the other kids jumped off a bridge, would you? Because I know my kids, and my kids would say, yeah. <laughs> and then you tell them, well, go jump, and I don't have to spend the money buying this stuff for you. No, don't tell them that. <laughs> but I do tell them, well, those aren't my kids, and I can't tell them that. Likewise, those aren't your parents, and they can't give you permission to play a game I've forbidden you to play. That simple. And, uh, oh man, these wires. Gotta keep track of them. Snagging on my headset. Anyway, just that sense of entitlement isn't as exaggerated as the, as the actual material items. So and so has a phone. I should have one too. So and so has this. I should have one too. So and so has this or that or whatever it is and I should have one too. No. No. Or my kids, I don't, I can't speak for anyone else's kids, but I can speak for my kids. Uh, you guys get this, or get to do this, why don't we? A, you're not an adult, and B, you're not the one paying for this stuff. When you're the one paying for it, then you can get the extra stuff, just for you. 
that's why mommy and daddy get extra stuff just for them because we're the ones paying for it well that's not fair and we just run down the list of things that aren't fair like not being able to go out and do whatever we want because we have kids at home we have to look after <laughs> having to go to work every day and not do whatever we want because we've got kids to pay for <laughs> that kind of thing and uh, yeah after you explain it they're like oh. but I still don't I don't think they really understand until they're out there working and then even when you're out there working it's not the same thing because when you're out there working and you're single and you have no kids you can do whatever you want you can pick one job over another you can hop around from job to job it's you know if you time it right you'll never miss your bills but you'll never be tied down to one particular thing and you can try out new stuff and you can do this and that but once you have kids you pretty much locked in to whatever you're doing unless and you have to strategically plan like you're fucking trying to fight a war to switch jobs because so, you got to lose your benefits cause, and and the rent's coming up and Susie's got braces and Timmy needs whatever you know and then it becomes a strategic maneuver to either find a better job or switch jobs because this job just doesn't do it for you or whatever and then you get locked into a job instead of finding your career and a career isn't the job you go to school for the career is the one you enjoy the most the one that it's like yeah I could do this the rest of my life and be okay with that that's your career I don't care if you work at a gas station if that's what you love that's your career you work at Burger King if that's what you love to do if you love I've worked at Burger King before if you love this, the level of stress that comes with it because that's more stressful in my opinion than working at a regular sit-down restaurant if you love that level of stress then that's that's your career any job I don't care what it is you do you collect garbage if you love it that's your career and yeah once you have kids you're kinda of locked in and so when they come up with their little sense of entitlement it's kinda irritating because you're like you know <laughs> life would be so much different if I had not had children back off a little bit <laughs> and they get it but they still their kids and they don't because they are they don't have that experience under their belt no matter how many times you explain something to someone until they actually get the experience under their belt it's just words, 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 blah, 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 blah. All they hear is blah, 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 no, blah, 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 you can't, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> As I've noticed my kids do this, and every kid I've ever seen does this. All they can think about is I want, I want, I want, and that is those words kind of circle around this object that's in their head that they want, I want, I want, I want, I want. And no matter what you say, all they hear is, I want, I want, I want. And everything out of their mouth is going to be to the effect of getting what I want, I want, I want. And that's how kids do things. <laughs> that's how kids work. And I've noticed that every solution they come up with, every argument in their favor that they come up with, is some way to get what they want. It's not really logic and reason is just yeah but yeah but um you're not hearing me it's not going to happen I'm telling you why I'm not trying to hear your explanation of why you want it to happen I'm trying to tell you why it's not going to happen and all you're doing is giving me excuses why it should happen <laughs> or why you made the decision you made well but I was yeah every decision you made was to the end was to your ends it had nothing to do with logic and reason or being fair it was so you could get what you wanted and I'm pointing that out to you but all you hear is no 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 and what you're trying to hear is yes 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 so you sidestep at that your entitlement says well I I should just get this and and this and this one track mind and uh, I've noticed that people with this sense of entitlement adults and children alike are just one track minded I'm not getting what I want. I'm not getting what I want. You better damn well give me what I want. Whoa. 
back up. <laughs> Even my kids, back away. <laughs> because we're going to have words here in a minute. And I'm going to explain to you why you're not going to get what you want. And I'm going to explain to this gentleman who's trying to get this elicit a particular response, which is for me to step down below him so he can pretend he's bigger than me or, or better than me or have more respect than me. And I'm trying to tell you that if you wanted my respect, if you really wanted my respect, you would have given me respect. Because all of the people I've ever met in my life that have, are worthy of my respect gave me respect either first or in return. So there was no entitlement there. It was the belief in basic human decency at work, in my opinion. Basic human decency says, I'm not going to rub your face into the dirt. I'm going to meet you on common ground, and we're going to be equals. That's basic human decency. That inflated expectation or entitlement says, you, you need to put me up here above you. And most people, that's how they act. And the only thing that makes them not do that is if they're afraid of you. Which, lucky for me, <laughs> happens to be the case a lot of the time. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, entitlement. That's my experience of it. That's my experience of my sense of entitlement. That's my experience of others' senses or others' sense of entitlement. So, not just talking or, or repeating something you've heard. I'm telling you from my own personal life experience. That exaggerated sense of entitlement or expectation I can't even tell you where it comes from from somebody else's point of view I can only tell you where it comes from from my point of view my sense of entitlement comes from uh, the belief in basic human decency I can't speak to anybody else's sense of entitlement other than having been a kid and trying to get what you want <laughs> but I can't speak to an adult level sense of entitlement that concerns anything other than wanting to be treated as equal. But anyway, we're getting on past the 30 minute mark and there was a, the intro was longer than normal so this is going to be a much longer video than I intended. <laughs> anyway, if you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can also favorite it if you want. Uh, Please don't forget to leave a uh, comment down below or a video response. Uh, please keep the comments on topic and don't just place any random comment that you like. Because in my last video, uh, someone left a comment and uh, all they did was they, they're trying to start a troll argument and I t tried to turn it into a meaningful discussion. The person probably won't take the bait, but whatever right so if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information or you just like the sound of my voice <laughs> go ahead and hit the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there <laughs>